All right, so got my forks, regulator adjusters on here. I'm just checking the sag on the front end here. Uh, I just use a wire tie in here. Now I've already set this up. Now, once you ride the bike, I can adjust that out. So if I need to, I can go tighter. I can go a little bit looser on it, depending on how it actually rides. So we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that right now. So the way I do it, jack jack the front end of the bike all the way up, stick a wire tie on here. So or you can measure from here to here. It's just a little bit easier doing it with a wire tie method. Then we're gonna let it down. What 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 you're trying to achieve here is most bikes, especially Harley's front end's kind of mushy as far as too much travel in front. I don't know if you ever get on your bike and you notice that the front end drops down inch, two inches maybe. And when you and when you nail the brakes, front end really dives. Uh, I don't I don't really like that. And most people once you set up their front end. The way it should be, they don't really like the old way either. There are some that do, but riding wise. Point is, you do little upgrades like this. I mean, it's you know these things are cheap. These preload adjusters, you know these were these were less than thirty bucks. It takes all like five minutes to put them in there. You know, jack the front end of the bike up, take the cap out, being careful that you're not. If you've not, if it's a used bike, you don't know. What we used to do is cut spacers and put in here, and then kind of use the stock uh, stock cap with a spacer under it. You know, you might end up with a one inch or a two inch spacer or whatever. So you're really trying to compress the spring, so you don't know if it's got spacers in there or not. If it's a used bike, four caps like this to put preload adjusters, you don't really use spacers. I guess you could, but very short spacer. But the point is, you know, you, you, do, you do the front end up. So when you nail the brakes, you're not using all your suspension travel up on the brakes. And then what happens is the front tire starts skidding because you, you've locked the front end down under, under hard braking. So basically, you're hitting small ripples in the pavement. Front, front tire is actually coming off the ground there. And... That's that's front front getting air on the tire ain't good, especially under braking. Then you start skidding across the pavement because you've got the front wheel locked up. And think of it, the front end's bouncing off the ground like that. And every time it bounces and you got the front brake locked up, it's going across the pavement. So that's uh that's our thing there. And then we'll see how our uh, how this thing actually rides and if we have to adjust it any. Already changed the fork oil in this thing, put 20 weight in there with a little bit of uh, extra, I think I put an extra half ounce or three quarters of an ounce in there to give it a little more a little more stiffness to the front end because you're taking the air gap out with a little bit more fluid. Need to, need to go to the post office here in a little bit. My uh, flip ons are, came in today, and I don't know if they delivered them to the mailbox or not. So I can go ahead and put the clip ons on there before I got the front end buttoned up. And then I can set the sag on the back end. What I'm shooting for on the front here is about, about an inch on the front end for the sag. Seems to work good on these things. Uh, you know, this is all experimental to begin with because, you know, you might ride it. Now, I've done this a lot before on other bikes, and this is about what I end up with. But uh, it's still, if you're doing it, you might have to make adjustments to it. You more than likely are going to have to make adjustments to it. What we got here. Need to ratchet it down on these caps a little bit. We're at like an inch and a half now, so adjust these caps here. 
tighten it up just a little bit. So we're going to start adjusting these a little bit. <clears throat> and if we don't have enough room, then we'll add, add, might have to add some spacers to it, maybe. I've never used this particular band, brand of preload adjusters. So you're just going to bring these down a little bit at a time. You want them both even. As far as how many lines you got showing here, we got one, two, three, four. Four lines and not just lines you can actually measure the, the height of them with the measuring stick there just to be sure they're even now if you have a if you have a bike that already has these on here uh, check and make sure they're even and if you're, if you're buying a sport bike or whatever from a dealership brand new bike and it has adjusters on it you know, check them before you leave. Because sometimes they should actually be doing that as part of the setup. That you're paying for a setup, and that should be part of it, setting that stuff, along with your, your controls and levers and everything else. That, for whatever reason, I don't know, I guess dealers quit doing it or whatever, or that they don't have a really good service department set up to do that. Whatever, I don't know. When I was a shop foreman, we always did it, and that was part of doing the setup, and your ass better do it, too. That's a good chance for the kind of off topic here, but that's it's a good chance for the sales salesman to bring you back and introduce you to the people in the service department. Good sales tactic there. Seven... 25 7 I didn't I didn't move this a whole lot so I'll move it maybe two two lines there if that maybe a line and a half bring this thing back down we can measure it again I can uh those on get the headlight on put the front fender back on and or order some new uh brake rotor bolts and uh black anodized stainless and uh anodized black anodized bolt, bolt stainless bolts we'll, uh wire tie back down get on here and bounce around and around a little bit probably gonna have to go more Add some more preload to it because we really, really moved it. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. This an inch and a quarter, so got a quarter inch more out of it. So I think we're going to leave it at that. We'll try that, and then if we need to tighten it up, some we'll tighten it up. If we need to loosen it up. We can loosen it up. Now, when you, you loosen it up, you make the front end a little more plush. And I still got stock springs in this thing, which it really could use some springs on it. I can tell. It probably, I think, uh, what I used to use, uh, race tech straight rate springs. Well, that was an entire different setup. That was uh, started off using progressive springs with progressive dampers down on the bottom here. And then upgraded that to uh, race tech straight rate springs with uh, race tech cartridge emulators in here instead of the. Of the progressive damp race damper tubes, which the uh, truth is, the race tech stuff felt a hell of a lot better than the progressive stuff. But that's it, we're at an inch and a quarter up here, whatever that is in millimeters. I don't know, probably 30 millimeters, which is about right for this thing. I think they said, I think that. They say on the street around 30 millimeter, 30 to 40 millimeters is good. Race stuff, you know, you want to tighten it up some, but this this isn't a race bike, so. And you can always tighten it up some if the adjuster's up here. If you want to, you can get some of them snacky booty uh, adjuster knobs to put up here so you don't have to uh, use a wrench to do it. 
There, we might do that later on. I'm not real concerned about changing it all the time. So we got some extra scratch. We might get some, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, that's it for the stag on the front end. What I do is I leave this on here. I'll leave a wire tie on here so I can see if it's bottoming out. I can pull the front end down and measure it from here to here. See what my what my bottom out is on here. And I'll probably I'll probably do that. Just so you can tell if you're using up all your travel or not. Hope that helps somebody out. It's a fairly simple process. So easy a monkey could do it. Hope everybody has a good week. It's Tuesday. Uh, that's our our spring sag. And I've got other videos on doing fork oil and replacing fork seals and fork tubes and whatever else. Fork braces on there. I'm still working on the front fender a little bit. We'll see. Anyway, everybody have a great week. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care.